McGrady, now that you're here, we'll start, <laughs> start the meeting. <laughs> I will call this regular meeting of the Lou Ray Town Council. We'll now come to order. Will you please stand and join me for a moment of silence? Congratulate Mr. Vickers, Ms. Lillard, and Mr. White on their election, or re-election, as the case may be. Congratulations, you, you all. All right. Are there any additions to or deletions from the agenda? All right, hearing none, we'll move on. Consent agenda. Mayor, I'd like to move that we approve the following consent agenda. The minutes from the regular council meeting of October 11th, 2022. The minutes of the work session, October 26th, 2022. And accounts payable totaling $232,388.06. Second. Discussion? Danielle? Mr. Vickers? Yes. Yes. Mr. Shiro? Yes. Mr. Pettit? Yes. Mr. Sowers? Yes. Mr. Webb? Yes. Okay, no one has signed up for citizen comments. Any citizen here want to speak? We'll move on. Stanley Trout Tournament, expansion of event. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Town Council. Uh, we're here with the Stanley Fire Department and the Boy Scout Troop looking to expand where we are doing the trout fishing tournament this year. Uh, and last year we had some people that were complaining that it was a little short section, a little overcrowded. So we're hoping to go from Linden Avenue, which is Oscar Sarge's Bridge, all the way to the circle across from Bulldog Field. And we'd also like to take in consideration of moving our registration to Shenandoah Valley Electric parking lot, if you guys would allow that to happen. It'd be more of a central location and would open up more parking at the parking ride and on the other end of the fishing thing. So that's another thing. Do you guys have any questions about that? Council, any questions? Uh, Shenandoah Valley, we'd have to clear with them, wouldn't we? Uh, do we use them when we have events there, Steve? Well, just as a courtesy, or just we'll let them know. But uh, typically, we have the, the ability to to offer it that as a, a okay. venue. For well, I had approached them to start with to see if it was el you know available, and uh, I got to answer back that uh, they wasn't sure if they still owned it from one person. <laughs> and, uh, they thought that it had been sold to the town, <laughs> but then it come back that they still own it, but y'all have control of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's uh, that's why I asked. I just want to make sure. It's, it's yeah, from what I can gather from the employees that had spoke to, I guess their management at the office here, they had no problem whatsoever. Well, I have no problem with it either, as long as we I just want to make sure we have the authority to do it. That's well, one of the reasons we've asked for expansion is, we all know we did have a gentleman that hit the truck last year. For the ones that don't know, uh, we did get scammed pretty good with the truck. Uh, it was a hoax insurance company, mm -hmm. so. For our reputation and everything, uh, the fire company bought the truck outright for the gentleman. So we kept our, our word. Uh, we had talked to the, our attorney, the investigation office at the sheriff's office, and they told us don't rep, you know, ruin our reputation, so we stood behind our word. Last I was told, it's been turned over to the FBI. But we've been told anything under 250000 they won't even look at it. So we're hoping by a gentleman hitting the truck, it'll, it'll expand more this year. I, I was curious about over a thousand fish are getting stocked. How how soon is that? Is that the day before or the morning? The evening before, yes. How many of those fish get caught? I mean, is it? Well, it could vary. It depends on water conditions, whether I can see the fish or whether different 
scenarios of where the fish go when they get into the creek. They could go up or downstream. Okay, but I'm asking about how many fish get turned in and get weighed. Is it hundreds? Out of a thousand? Probably a third. Probably a third. Or a third of them. But not everybody brought their fish in. They just right yeah we we don't see some of them just walk straight over to the truck with them and stuff if they know they don't have tags they'll, they'll right. leave with them. I th it seems like a lot of fish to me well we we tried to i guess uh, how many entries we're going to have when we place our order we won't know till later on before the event is actually how many we do have pre registered not the morning of we trialed out six fish per fisherman okay that way, everybody ain't everybody gonna catch their six fish limit. Right. But if there are to be caught, I mean, where we put the tank trout in right before dark by morning, he had removed roughly two 250 yards downstream. When we put him in, he took off upstream, but he wound up downstream being caught. This is a fundraiser, right? For you guys, correct. I hope you do very well with it. Yes, well. Well, we, as we've been told this year, price of the fish is five eighty-five a pound, and we put three in last year. The one I personally bought myself weighed a little over six pounds. We still don't know if that one's caught. Still don't know if that was even caught. Hmm. Well, at least it wasn't in the day of the tournament. Do you think of expansion? Uh, any, you foresee any issues with parking down near Oscar Sowers' bridge or anything like that? Are people going to be essentially parked at registration and hopefully walk out? Is that the idea? Or uh, Some will walk, some will probably drive. But if they know it's limited parking, they'll... You still have your certain holes that people, people want like to fish. fish. Sure. That's the reason yeah. people's complain about it's a little bit too tight. And some people like the upper section of the stream better than lower. So we don't, why don't we just expand it out? Why don't they come check in? They can go wherever they want to. Did it rain last year or was that the year before? Oh, no, last it year. rained last year. All, pretty much all night. It didn't hurt the crowd too much, did it? Oh, no, they sure. loved it. They loved the watercolor because they couldn't be seen. Huh. Okay. All right, Council, any other questions? No, I think it's a good event. I wish you guys the best with it. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. I have asked Udi or Steve at Company One uh, about them serving food. He said, as usual, probably not, but I will ask. So that's the answer we have right now. So they have an option if they want to serve. We need a motion to approve this? No, sir. We just want to approve this. Acclamation. All right. Thank you all. Good luck. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. All right. Lou Ray Downtown Initiative. Ms. Elliott. Hey, Steve. Are we, are we live streaming right now? Should be, yes, sir. Okay. Someone said we weren't. Okay. Good evening, Council and Mr. Mayor. So, first off, I do. Can, I think we can close the door on the trick or treat this year. Then call that a big success. I think we had well over a thousand people trick or treating. We ran out of candy again within about an hour, an hour's time. So, um, but it was a good thing. And people really up their game. Our business owners really up their game this year. I mean, it was some neat stuff. I, the IBR folks had a really neat thing going on up there. And they had a line, of course, the Methodist Church, the Main Street Baptist, everybody, just downtown as a whole, pretty much 100% cooperation from all of our business owners and, and the organizations that joined us at the Visitor Center and on the, um, on the PAL Plaza. So very good event. And thanks to Parks and Recs, as always, because Jennifer and her staff just, they just do so much to help us out with that and get that coordinated in the PD as well, even though Bo did they change things up on me 30 minutes before we got started and put the candy check over here in the parking lot. But I'll deal with that another day. <laughs> he's in California. Yeah. It figures. He's running. See, he's running. He knew. He heard you were looking. He knew I was looking for him. That's right. Um, <clears throat> I'm proud to announce that Anderson Windows is going to be our sponsor for our Christmas window decorating contest for our businesses this year. They have awarded us a $500 sponsorship. So we're going to be able to up the ante with prize money for the merchants and do some marketing and some fun things with that. So we're really excited and we're glad that they're going to be part of our, you know, engaging in our, in our downtown. And they also participated in trick or treat. So it's nice to see them, you know, being part of our community. Christmas tree lighting will be December the 2nd at 7.30. Mr. Mayor, will you please attend to light the tree as always? 
was that? December the 2nd at 7.30. That's a Friday. And, and of course, we invite all of council to attend. If you want to have vice mayor, since he's going to be leaving us, let this be his last hurrah. <laughs> hey, we'll take it. That would be great. Um, I'll take the leftovers, right? Yeah, there you go. You know, you're leaving short time, or you don't care, right? Well, we'll, the um, we'll get back to that. Okay, uh, I did want to let you know that Tony Vila and Isaac George, on behalf of their business interest here in Luray, have they are donating about twenty five hundred dollars to add additional lights and ornaments to the community Christmas tree. They are going to be working. They are going to be having their own team doing that for the town. It's a project that I'll be working along with them with myself and Ryan. They are also going to be providing music and hopefully a light show at the Christmas tree lighting this year. We're hoping to be able to synchronize the lights with the music. So I think that would be fun. We will also have our own Santa Claus this year. So we will have Santa down there for the kiddos, and we will be doing hot cocoa. We're not sure with who yet, but we know we're going to do hot cocoa. So we're trying to, because last year we had so many people come out for the Christmas tree lighting. We had about 300 people. We want to have, make it better, you know, improve upon it so that we have a more, you know, make it more a festive since people are taking the time to come down and visit and, and be there. So that's kind of what we're working on for that. Yes, I am reaching out to Mr. Schubner to see if the choir will come, and they, I'm sure that they will if they don't have a conflict. They usually are really good about coming for those types of things. And then shop late will be December the 9th, so the shops will be open until 8 p.m. The um, I'm also working, I had a, a meeting today with Lisa Thompson with National Main Street and also the folks with Virginia Main Street. Our rem work remote program, we're in the process of that. I'm working on some things. I'm going to be working with Lisa. She's going to help me put the business plan together. And once that's put together, then I will be circling back around to those of you that are involved in that project to discuss where we want to move forward as a town with this program and how we want to handle the grant money and how we want to handle managing the properties that we use for the remote work. Capstone project, I received the preliminary report from our VCU student today. I have not read it yet, but I will read that this week and get my notes back to her by Friday because I think she has to turn it in Friday evening. But that's looking good from what I just kind of looked over, so I will keep you posted. And once I have the final copy, I'll make sure that it makes its way to your packets so that you know what we're working on. And I think other than that, I think that's about it. You're welcome. Any questions? Question. Keep up the good work, Jake. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Mr. Burke, award of contract. All right. <clears throat> yes, sir. Council is requesting to consider the award of the IT services contract to Vision Technology Group to provide IT and network management services to the town. Following an RFP, we had two responses, and based on the staff review of the proposals, VTG uh, uh, will, will, is recommended for this award. Um, the proposed contract would be in the amount of $50,500 for a, a one-year contract. Uh, the proposed service cost would exceed our available funding in the 22-23 budget, and staff would request council's consideration of uh, use of $25,000 of our ARPA funds to go towards this contract. Council, questions? I think we covered it pretty thoroughly in the work session. <coughs> uh, yeah, I'll move the town council award the IT services contract to Vision Technology Group in an amount not to exceed $50,500 for a one-year contract with up to four one-year extensions. A further move to approve the use of $25,000 from the town's ARPA allocations to fund this contract. And I further authorize the town manager and the town treasurer to execute all agreements necessary for the prosecution. <laughs> Getting the job done. <laughs> to get it done. <laughs> To um, to secure the services for this project. <laughs> I'll second that. All right. Any more discussion? Danielle. Miss Lillard. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. 
Mr. Sowers? Yes. Mr. Webb? Yes. Mr. Vickers? Yes. Hey, Steve, we're not, we're not streaming on Facebook. People, I got two texts. Mm, yeah, I've received a message as well. People are missing their council meeting. <laughs> um, if you can't do it, it's fine. I mean, I'm just. It's indicating that we're, we're live on Facebook now. Hmm. Um, Is it on YouTube? No, not YouTube, on, on Facebook. Okay, yeah. Um, it's not, I'm on mine, it's not, it's not broadcasting. Someone said that. <coughs> Facebook post 12 hours ago said click on Facebook live for meeting. There's no nothing to click. Sign the contract, we ought to. Can we consider that question? Can we keep going or wait till you fix that? Or we only do. We can fix it, but yeah, we're, we're no big deal. It's saying that now it's saying that Facebook deleted our connection. I have no idea. <laughs> um, oh, probably had me cut off. <laughs> <laughs> we are recording it, and, and it'll be available on YouTube okay. tomorrow. We'll figure out. Now that we have a contract, we'll figure out what's wrong. With <laughs> yeah. The, un unfortunately, the message I'm getting now was that the uh, the software that we use to to stream to Facebook is saying that Facebook changed the um, stream the stream key and I don't know why so we will check on that yeah no big deal it's just people tune it in so it's people are watching people want to see it Okay, award of contract, Dean Park Recreation Courts Project. Um, Mr. Burke and I are still working out some details with uh, our partners in the project, so we'd like to, I'd like to ask we put that off until December. Everybody's okay with that. All right, Airport Authority Resolution. Mr. Markowitz, always, always a pleasure. Oh, my pleasure. Good to see you guys. I, uh, I haven't been to see you for a while. And if you've been by the airport recently, you see we're putting up another big hangar. It's about 80 by 80. So uh, we're not exactly sure what's going to go in there yet. Uh, Jeff uh, Pence, who owns Appalachian Freight, Chandel County, is, is we've leased him the land. He's building that. But at this time, we feel probably it's going to be an expansion of the maintenance facility. So I know he's in talks with... Um, with the Krauss boys about that. And just to let you know, the Krauss Aircraft Maintenance Solutions that's out there, they have uh, currently have six people working in that unit, and uh, he's advertising for more, uh, for more A and P, for another A and P mechanic. So I know he's very busy. Um, he brings a lot of traffic to the airport, and uh, a lot of those people buy fuel. So anyway. So now to the purpose of the of this evening. So three years ago, uh, June of 2019, I met with USDA to talk about the projects that we have coming up. And uh, I don't know if any of you have worked with Cindy Hines or a, uh, Daniel Wine Winemaker from Culpeper, uh, but these guys are, you know, this that's what they do is they loan money to community projects and uh, my, my first goal was try to refinance the existing million and a half dollar loan that we had on the uh, on the existing hangars so we were paying I think uh, four and a half four and three quarter percent on those units and with interest rates as low as they were um, I wanted to get those refinanced so <clears throat> and plus we had three projects coming up that don't qualify at, at least at the time didn't qualify for federal money and so those three projects are uh, an additional 18-unit T-hanger building, uh, a terminal building, and the third project is a fuel farm. And the fuel farm, just so you know, it, we have two 12,000-gallon fuel storage tanks. They're ones on either end of the airport. And to keep the DEQ and EPA happy, they like those tanks in a... Uh, containment facility so when the truck unloads if or if there's a spill that it, it contains that so that's but none of those three projects at the time and I'll qualify that because I've we're 
got some other information. At the time, they didn't qualify for any federal funding. Uh, we do get state funding. So, so all three of those projects uh, cost uh, $6.4 million. And we have, uh, we anticipate state grants in total of $3.1 million. Now, we've already received grants to design these projects uh, close to uh, $350,000 in design grants we've already received. But the total grants on those $6.4 million is $3.1 million. And so that leaves $3.3 million that we need to borrow or to, to cover these projects. And plus the existing loan uh, of one point, almost $1.5 million brings it up to a total of $4.7 million. The, um, in, in, the, in the process of doing this, USDA said we had to refinance, we had to find a bank and refinance the hangars, the $1.5 million, uh, because they couldn't refinance it as long as they were holding it. So uh, Bank of the James refinanced that for us at 1.99% at fixed for five years, and that's an interest-only loan. So we got over that hurdle, and right now, with again, this was a three-year project, a lot of a lot of budgets, a lot of numbers, and some additional environmental work. And finally, USDA has approved us for uh, approximately 4.3 million dollars, and that's a fixed-rate loan, two and a half percent for 40 years. So now, as you all know, the beauty of that is. That payment will stay the same for 40 years, and as the hangers, the money from the hangers will service that loan, and plus give us a little cash left over. And as inflation raises the rental rates on those hangers, then we'll spin off a little excess cash. So uh, that's uh, the the payment on that loan will be approximately. $14,000 a month, and, and I'll have an excess of $14,000 a month coming in in hangar rent. So we'll start off covering the cost of the loan, and, and once again, as, as, the, uh, uh, as the rents go up, then we'll spin off a little cash. Now, uh, I've got an ace in the hole on this thing because the federal government notified uh, us airports last year that they had set aside five billion that's b billion with a b to replace uh old uh, terminal buildings and our certainly our terminal building would be the poster child for that operation <laughs> because it's a hundred year old chicken house and uh <clears throat> now we applied for that money last year we did not get it they were they gave it to airports that were ready to replace their terminals so now we have we have an architectural firm uh we use we got grant dollars we've designed a beautiful terminal building and we've once again reapplied for that money so we are hopeful that uh we'll get some of that five billion dollars and if so then the terminal building will cost us little or nothing and we won't have to borrow as much from usda which will then the payment will be less so and the USDA is aware of this, of course. We also, uh, Congress passed the infrastructure bill, and they gave the FAA a chunk of money, and we've been allocated uh, <clears throat> $318,000 of that infrastructure money. And now that money is sitting at, at FAA because they don't know what we can spend it on yet. We're, we believe we can use that money to build our... Uh, the parking lot for the terminal building, which will, once again, less money we have to borrow. <clears throat> we also, since we haven't had a federal project in the last number of years, we've accumulated 600000 in FAA entitlements, and we're having a meeting with them, uh, hopefully this month, uh, to determine how we can spend that money. And if they'll let us have some of that money, then once again, we don't have to borrow as much from from USDA. Uh, the uh, the resolution you have before you this evening does two things. Uh, USDA will not loan 
construction money. So we put out an RFP and we got a low bid from a bank of Clark County at a little over 4% for construction funds. And that's a five year interest only loan. And then uh, of course, once, once we finish these projects, then the USDA will take out the existing loan that we have with Bank of the James and the construction loan and they'll, you know, will we'll be locked for 40 years. So, and that's what this res the resolution you have this evening. So, you're saying hangar rentals, new hangar rentals will cover the whole. Not new hangar, all the hangar rentals. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. But, the, other, with, with but the hangar rentals, yeah, the rents from those hangars. Cover the full debt yeah. service. And the 26 units we have now are fully rented, and they have been since 08. And I've probably got 30 people on a wait list. So I was going to ask you if you still have yeah. that wait list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. USDA want to know that too. <laughs> but they are, uh, we, we are, the, what I'm asking people, and I've contacted uh, at least 18 people. I've, I've talked to others, but uh, what, what people are willing to do is write a check for one year's rent in advance for these hangers too, plus a month's deposit. So. So that I, sh I should have 18 leases in place with payment in full for the first year's rent before we can get these constructed. And if all goes well, we should have these hangers ready by August of 23, be ready to move into. So we've done all the design work. We've got the, we actually have a contract with Lance Construction Company. They were the low bidder and um, they came in just about what we had anticipated. So. So we're, uh, we're, we, we feel like we're in a good place with this. And uh, three years to, of dealing with USDA and lots of budgets and lots of numbers, and, and they're happy. So uh, uh, we, got, we got very fortunate to get this loan approved in June before the Federal Reserve started there um, jacking up interest rates. So um, but I feel like 2.5%. She said the rate could go down if uh, if the stars align, but uh, I don't anticipate that. Not, but you never know in the next five years if if they uh, if things go really south. Um, you know, if they can force a big enough recession, they might have to lower rates. I don't think we'll go back as low as we were though. So, any any questions? I'm. Well, how this construction going? On? Are you guys going to run out of land at any point? Uh, we have a mas we have a master plan, and we we everything you know. It would be nice to have some more land. When when we expand the runway, uh, uh, every project for after these projects will will qualify for federal grants, and they get we get ninety ninety eight percent grant dollars on future projects, and we hope to expand the runway out to five thousand feet. And, and we'll have to, yes, we'll have to uh, buy some more land too. And that'll qualify for the 98% money. It's so. working now, Steve. Well, oh, so I, I'm glad you're an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, <laughs> it's. You've done a good job. You have to with these with these folks. They they asked me, the U.S. they asked me for a, uh, a budgeted, five-year budgeted balance sheet. Now, I don't know if any of y'all ever did budgets, but. I think if you ask your town manager to give you a budgeted balance sheet, he might uh, he might tell you you've lost your mind. But I I, I did provide them with a five year budgeted balance sheet. But I've never been asked that in my many years of uh, working as an accountant. So, but it made them every time they'd send stuff to D.C. Of course, stuff would come back with crazy questions. But but uh, anyway. Does anybody else have questions? You know, I just want to say, pal, this will be the last time I'll probably see while I'm sitting here. But, uh, you know, my, it was an eye-opener to me, my first meeting with the airport uh, authority. Not only does pal do all this financial work, but he also gets up in the middle of the night and fuels helicopters. Well, sometimes. occasionally I do that. Uh, yeah. But you do that. And uh, he's spent a tremendous amount of time with the airport over the years and continues to. I hope everyone appreciates all the all the work you do out there pal it's it's been fun to do i think we've got a really nice uh facility out there and we just want to see it continue to grow which it's it's a very uh if you spend some time out there and see what goes on 
it is it is amazing how much it it does for the community i mean it brings you know it's it's a it's a gateway to the community this terminal building is going to be you know when people land that's the first thing they see is your terminal building and uh, this they our architects have done a beautiful job designing this and uh, of course not only is it the first thing they see when they arrive but it's the last thing they see when they um, when they depart you know so but uh, and we'll I look. Can remember back when uh, just the caverns owned it and we was gonna go in you know 50 50 with it and some people thought that was a terrible thing to do but look at what we got now yeah major asset to this it's, it is a, it's a great facility and it and it'll continue to grow so well pal we thank you for being here tonight yes sir your presentation and again we thank you for all you do for the airport we can't thank, thank you enough I, I enjoy every minute of it <laughs> thank you guys thank you pal okay uh, we've got a resolution to pass oh we do we okay. need to move on that all right I'm sorry okay I'd move that the town council approves the concurrent resolution with the Luray Page County Airport Authority financing as presented and authorize the mayor to sign the resolution. Second that. Any more discussion? Any discussion? Danielle? Mr. Shiro? Yes. 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 Mr. Sowers? Yes. Mr. Webb? Yes. Mr. Vickers? Yes. Mr. Lillard? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, pal. Okay, now, ARPA. Mr. Burke? Uh, Council is requested to consider authorization of ARPA funding in the amount of $45,000 for the acquisition of a replacement sludge application truck for our wastewater treatment plant. The current truck is a 1991 Ford F-800 that's nearing the end of its ability to be roadworthy and uh, the town staff have located a 2016 Freightliner with a Newton Crouch NC500 spreader in Harrisonburg. Staff would would request uh, council's consideration so that we can continue to do sludge at application even in the event that the, the farm right down the street uh, does not become available in the future. That truck was 30 years old almost. Yes, sir. What do you find a used sludge truck? Well, are there a lot? To be honest with you, we were, we were, <laughs> this was going to have to be something that we would budget for a new one in, in the next. Uh, upcoming right. fiscal year um, but thankfully they found what it's actually from North Carolina how it wound up in Harrisonburg for huh. sale I don't know but thankfully um, our uh, superintendent and super, assistant superintendent at the plant found out about it and and it's it's a wonderful opportunity because knew we wouldn't be able to get this for probably less than 200,000 yeah you Google it I mean it's slim pickings it's, oh, like, it's like five of them yeah. and then a lot of them were 2003 and they were only six or eight thousand less than this so it's so if this one farm goes away from where we can uh, spread the sludge is there really hard to find another location uh, it's not hard there's there's a number of farms in Page County uh, it's just that uh, we would have to go through permitting with right. DEQ um, and then uh, again the, the the truck we have now it's a quarter of a mile to the driveway uh, from the plant to where we apply it now. I don't know that I would trust the, the, the truck going any further than a quarter of a mile down the road, and that's why this is a, a great opportunity for the town. Will we keep the truck we have as well? Um, for retired councilmen that want to come play, absolutely. <laughs> I heard I'm very good at spreading sludge. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know that they're planning to replace it because, um, it, again, it's it's drivable around the yard, but um, I don't know that I don't know that we'd get any money out of it. No, no, I was just curious. I, I, I think it would be good to keep it. I mean, just in case for emergency or something. Yes, yeah. I was going to wonder if the new one would be ready for the Christmas parade. <laughs> um, it may well be. <laughs> We could try uh, try putting in some white snow. See if it. Gosh. All right, council, what do you want to do? Mayor, I have a motion. I move that the town council authorize the use of the 45000 of the town's ARPAS allocation to fund the acquisition of the 2016 Freightliner with a Newton Crouch NC500 spreader for the wastewater treatment plant as presented. I'll second that. 
Discussion? Manuel? Yes. Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mr. Webb? Yes. Mr. Vickers? Yes. Mr. Willard? Yes. Mr. Cameron? Yes. All right, Mr. Merrick, ARPA, recycling trailers. I missed something? No. Actually, I think we're on. We're, no, you did. I missed it. I apologize. Too many pages. To this. Uh, Council's requested to consider authorization of ARPA funding in the amount of $5,000 for the acquisition and improvement of two recycling trailers from Page County to establish an in town recycling drop off center off of Furnace Road. Uh, following a discussion with Page County, they indicated that the trailers would need to be purchased for $1,500 each. Uh, and we're estimating an additional $2,000 to make any repairs and paint them. Well, for recycling, this is great. Thank you very much for finding these. I don't know why they have so many of them up there. Uh, apparently, they, they, they found a deal, uh, and <laughs> then they're trying to find uses for them. Okay. I'd like to move that the town council authorize the use of $5,000 to the town's ARPA allocation to fund the acquisition and improvement of two recycling trailers from the Page County as presented. I'll second that. Any discussion? So who will empty the containers? Well, uh, the plan from that we understand from Page County, the town would be responsible for the uh, transfer of the trailers to the battlefield landfill we would leave the trailer with their staff they would empty the trailers and then we would come pick them up that's part of the reason that we get two is that we'll always have one uh, available for folks to, to do drop off and we have the tow the vehicle yes sir we have more of this and yes. staff as well yes sir um, the, the staff have expressed some concern internally about uh, what happens if our residents don't comply and put just general garbage or don't put things in the right uh, container if we take it to the landfill and they can't uh, recycle it they'll have to you know, it'll become it. landfill material if that happens too often enough we'll have to report back to council that we'll have to either uh, look at reducing the hours of its its operation and, and other things we're hoping that because it's a benefit to our residents that do want to recycle that they will uh, respect the the uh, drop off and we won't have to do anything more but uh, once we get it open we'll just have to evaluate what's going on with it and uh, I know that the, the chief is looking at putting in a, a security camera so that we can have some idea of if there is vandalism or abuse of, of the facility and I think we would be probably closing it overnight so that it doesn't become a potential for a, a dump site. Are these trailers um, to the point that eventually we could work it back into curbside collection with them? Uh, they, they have that ability, yes, sir. Um, if, we, if we want to, to go that route and, and, and add on staff or, or if the... It would be something to shoot for to get back to curbside because it's controlled better for one thing and yes, number two, you get a lot you get a lot better participation with it. Um, yes, sir. Uh, again, it, it's just a matter of trailering this vehicle. Uh, I think what we had originally was just a yeah, just a 12 foot or 15 foot trailer that we had cans on the back of, and effectively this is just a a, a big can. So we're just going to provide like a transfer spot. It's not really we're not doing any recycling per se. It goes to the landfill, and they either sell it or or trash it or whatever they do well, right uh, uh, what we had been doing originally when we had curbside is we would take it to the landfill and they would uh, be responsible see, for see i'm all for it if somehow or another somebody could find a, a vendor that would want that cardboard or want that glass and that it could actually go someplace besides page county landfill uh, to my understanding and, and what we, we will coordinate with with the county i don't know that they're accepting glass or they have a market for glass right now uh, okay. and I think they're accepting it, but I don't think there is a market for it. I think the market is primarily for cardboard, paper, uh, plastics. Uh, See, I keep reading that plastic never gets recycled. People says it does. It just doesn't get 
It's my understanding that if it is clean, it can be uh, taken to the Trex factory in Winchester. I think that's for the primary uh, recycling point for plastics in, in the area. Uh, but they are very specific about those materials. Right. And again, we're relying on Page County to, to find vendors and to, to relay back to us what materials uh, have a market and, and don't have a market. Well, just the fact that we get more of it sorted and taken to the landfill that is, is a step forward. Yes, this sir. Is good. And, and again, this is a stopgap. Uh, we've not been able to um, continue or to, to get confirmation that uh, the uh, inmate would be available can, uh, on a regular basis to resume the curbside. So establishing an in-town convenience center would allow our residents to have a more local facility to drop off. And actually what we heard at the, the, the VML conference was that a number of communities are actually getting out of the curbside uh, yeah. recycling business and, and simply establishing uh, the convenience centers to promote recycling in their, their locality. I think the challenge when you were talking about the, you all were talking about the markets and you talking about the plastic would be clean or a certain type of plastic. And I think that's the biggest challenge from what little bit I understand about it, whether it be curbside or something like this, is the items getting mixed together, you know, into the ends or, or even someone with what they set out of the curbside, you know, as far as the stuff has to sort of be picked and sorted to have the value of, you know, what a truck's coming to get is exactly this clean, Material, so it's, it's tough, but like I say, I like this at least to start. Could you make a motion? Uh, a motion, motion second. second. Okay, yeah. any more discussion? Daniel, Mr. Sanders? yes, <coughs> Mr. Webb, yes, Mr. Vickers, yes, Ms. Mulder, yes, Mr. Shiro, yes, Mr. Pettit, yes, Mr. Burke, ARPA retention bonus. Uh, yes, sir. Council's request is to consider authorization of ARPA funding in the amount of $54,000 for the employee retention bonus for all full-time and full-time part-time town employees. Uh, the Virginia State Code requires this approval be authorized by ordinance uh, that our town attorney has drafted and provided to you at your seats. Um, and then approval of this funding would allow bonuses to be included in the December paycheck. So the bonus would be applied um, uniformly across the workforce? Yes, sir. Uh, $1,000 for all full-time and then mm -hmm. 500 for all of our full-time, part-time, which I believe right now we only have one, um, maybe two. two. Yeah. Council, your thoughts? I, I don't have a problem with it. Anytime we keep our employees happy, I'm all for this. You like a motion? Yes, sir. I move that the town council authorize the use of fifty-four thousand dollars of this town's ARPA allocation to fund the employee retention bonus for all full-time and uh, part-time employees, and further move to authorize the mayor to sign ordinance 2022-24 as presented. Here a second. Second. Any more discussion? Daniel? Mr. Webb? Yes. Mr. Vickers? Yes. Mr. Lillard? Yes. Mr. Charro? Yes. Mr. Pettit? Yes. Mr. Towers? Yes. All right, Mr. Burke, item G, code amendment. Yes, sir. Before I have one I'm question sorry. before we get off the ARPA funding. Um, letters from Lowell regarding the yes, Carolina. We'll Are we going to consider? For your a discussion for your work session. session. Work session yes, okay. Sir. Okay. I guess can we get an update on everything that's been allocated yes. at the work? Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I apologize. We I, I didn't know. We we have received some outside um, requests uh, regarding the the Carolina. Um, that seemed to be a better discussion for council at, at your work session. No, no. I just want to make sure we we're, we're going to invite Lowell. To, to yeah. sort of, and the other thing is, uh, uh, can we also further discuss the uh, storage building that we were talking about for, uh, I guess it's for Parks and Rec, so that uh, police can start using this one down here? Yes, sir. Thank you. 
Thanks, Steve. Uh, Council's requested to consider referral to the Planning Commission uh, a code amendment to establish Chapter 518 commercial vehicles and residential zone parking restrictions. Uh, the town's police department has recently received complaints about a tractor truck that's parked in a residential driveway and operating routinely uh, con and continuously uh, throughout the day and night. Um, and staff would propose uh, consideration that would restrict uh, 12,000 pound vehicles and above that are commercial in nature from parking in our R1, R2, R3, or R4 zoning districts. Uh, one thing that we can we would discuss with the Planning Commission would be if there is consideration or desire for consideration of a special use permit to allow a commercial vehicle to park in any of those districts uh, with the approval of the Planning Commission and Council. This doesn't happen a lot, does it? No, sir. I can't think of but one truck I know of that's had a residential lot. Uh, and, and, and again, it's only been recently that, that we've had this, this tractor trailer that parked in a residential area, but um, PD was there when it was running and, and it, it's a large enough vehicle that it does shake the, the ground and, and the, the, the neighbor complained that it's not only hearing it, but feeling it. I guess when they discuss that, they'll define commercial vehicle as our, I mean, it wouldn't be limited. We're trying to limit the larger trucks on the truck trailer. trailer but what about a guy like that has a that has a handyman service that has a van with a with a signage on it? Would that be considered commercial, or is it defined by weight? Or? Uh, well, right now the, the the draft that we have is defined by weight to try and exclude some of the the, the smaller vehicles. If if council desires to include any no. commercial, we, again we were trying to limit it to the. The, the uh, ones that really do pose a problem. School buses did pop in my head, though, so I was wondering what those. I, I have no idea how much school bus weighs. Uh, but what this uh, on this, they, they put a weight in it, but under the 46.2, <coughs> which is what you referenced in this uh -huh. proposal, uh, they specify a tractor truck uh, or semi trailer. Mm -hmm. Well, in the Virginia okay. Code under 46.2, 100, it okay. describes specifically what a tractor trailer okay. or what a road tractor is. And what a trailer is, mm. so that doesn't really incorporate a bus um, or a dump truck or a van or something like that. It's specific. Um, but with that, one thing that I'd just like us to think about as we look at this, I'm familiar with that complaint, and it was a legitimate complaint by a neighbor um, or a neighborhood with a gentleman that kept a truck running quite a bit, you know, in there. And I wouldn't want that near my home. But that situation, we've got an owner of a truck that didn't, that was not considerate of his neighbors and was foolish to have it running. And I think we do need to address that. And we do need to put a stop to that. But I think we're painting with a pretty broad brush to say that no semi truck or trailer can be parked in R1, 2, 3, or 4 um, because of this man's actions being inconsiderate of his neighbors. We're, we're, putting that with every truck driver. And I guess what I'm getting at is there's several lots, especially in R1 or 2, some even 3 that are a couple acres in size, whatever. I mean, um, if we get into R4 and 5, no, it doesn't make sense because it's probably sitting in front of an apartment building, um, even though it may fit, not the best place. But if some guy's an independent trucker and that's his business and his home in Luray is a three-acre track, and he'd like to park his truck. And I think because of one man's foolishness, we're penalizing everyone uh, and, and with that. And this is being placed in the zoning, so there's no necessarily a, 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 a fine to it. And we are a complaint-driven area. So if, if someone does have a, a large track that they've parked a vehicle and the neighbors don't complain, we're not we're not actively seeking out that, that but uh, I, I, I do understand that, and, and that's why there is, might be consideration for a special use permit, or we could put in some kind of uh, lot size. Again, uh, you, you are correct that this is kind of a, a broad, uh, yeah, be, encompassing everything. But if somebody had a barbecue tonight, had a loud party, and a connection with their outdoor barbecue and everything, we don't want to say, hey, anyone living in town can have a <laughs> just because somebody got out of 
paying for it. You know, and that's how I feel with this particular truck owner is that he was not considerate of his neighbors yet. I personally know off the top of my head probably four or five different people through the years. And some of these are like construction contractors that have under this definition a truck that would pull a low boy trailer that would haul a backhoe or a um, other type of piece of equipment that under this definition it's a road tractor. Um, it's not hauling freight up and down the interstate, but it's moving equipment. But he has adequate space to park it at his home, you know, here in town. And I don't know. If I was a trucker, and just as you said, I, I look at my neighbor next door, and there's a school bus that's three times longer than my truck, has the same big Cummins diesel engine and everything. I can park there, but my livelihood, and my business, I can't park my own truck in my yard. That's. Yeah, we need to address this problem that originated this, but I think we're going too broad in mm. banning all trucks. I'll be quiet. Yeah, no, I would just say I, I had the same concerns and echo very much what you've said, um, Councilman Pettit. And, you know, I live in the Boomfield. I've made that clear, I think, a few times. And um, I have some neighbors where this may or may not be applicable, and I would hate to, but they are very courteous. They're, it's, we do not have those situations. And I think about how that could become a nuisance for them that they're now going to have to find a, a you know um, an off-site area to park their the vehicle that they depend on daily for their livelihood, and and that's not fair because you've got some that don't know how to practice consideration. I think we need to address those. Couldn't be handled through the through a noise ordinance as opposed to restricting them. It could have. Uh, again, what we would have to then go out. Have a decibel. And, Yes. readings and that but still well tonight we're just trying to oh, yeah, push pass it on to the planning commission, commission let them yeah. come back to the recommendation yeah. so. yeah. and even if we went the route of something um so like what you're saying with the noise on it let's say that you are an owner of a truck like this or let's say it doesn't have to be a road truck it could be a dump truck it could be anything but if you went out and started it at four in the morning and let it sit there and run for an hour and a half before you Harley Davidson, <laughs> right? To where maybe we need an ordinance that if you, um, if your particular piece of equipment becomes a nuisance to neighbors and, and you, it habitually does that, that at that point, hey, you may be banned from having that uh, you know, at your resident room. But to, but to make it across the board, you know, for someone that just as you said, some neighbors that uh, they are considerate, you know, yeah, they, they get it, start it, go, you know, they come back home. And, and uh, we can work with Jason to identify any other code sections. This was the only one that I was able to identify that specifically addressed the issue that was presented to us. But um, and there's, that, that was part of the, the reason to, to talk about the SUP is that there's always the exception to the rule. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if there's any w better way that we can define uh, a nuisance, but I don't know that we can necessarily do something that if you're a repeat offender for a noise ordinance if, if I, i'll have to check with jason on that it's hard not to be arbitrary and capricious when you're getting into that kind of stuff yeah, and especially like you said harley davidson's for crying out loud I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so. not to, i love harley davidson's don't no i'm not talking about <laughs> all right do we have a motion to send it to the planning commission yeah, I will move that the town refer the, to the Planning Commission consideration of a code amendment to, to establish Chapter 518 commercial vehicles and residential zones parking restrictions. Okay, I'll second that. Or any, I should add, or any other suggestions. Any bright ideas? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Any more discussion? Daniel? Mr. Vickers? Yes. Yes. Mr. Tyro? Yes. Mr. Pettit? Yes. Mr. Yes. And Mr. Yes. Okay, Mr. Botkins, you have something for us? Yes, sir. Good evening, Mayor and Council. You have in your packet tonight information concerning a potential amendment to the town's procurement policy. Um, under the town's current policy, the town is not able to purchase under another locality's uh, contract unless that locality's procurement document specified that it was being conducted as a cooperative procurement. And that requirement is a default requirement under the Virginia Public Procurement Act 
but it's not a mandatory requirement for uh, towns or localities like Luray that has adopted its own local public procurement policy. So based upon some talks that I've had with Steve and Brian, uh, removing this requirement from the town's policy could create some flexibility that might be useful from time to time. Um, the example that I mentioned in my memo is remote read water meters. There have been two or three other uh, localities in this area that have conducted procurements for the same type of remote read water meters that the town is pursuing. Uh, unfortunately, none of those procurements that I'm aware of included the language that uh, it was being conducted as a competitive, a cooperative uh, procurement. So under the town's current policy, uh, Luray is not able to take advantage of the low bid that's recognized and being offered to these other localities. So if this amendment uh, was adopted, the town could contact the low bidders on those other procurements to see if the contractor is willing to extend those same terms on the same items to the town. And assuming an agreement could be reached, then that saves Luray the cost and administrative time of preparing the documents and issuing the solicitation. Uh, there's also uh, potential savings available in just being able to buy something in a shorter period of time. Uh, there may be some more urgency to this uh, than I expect than I thought. Uh, Mr. Christman has shared some information with me before tonight's meeting that um, the most recent procurement conducted for these water meters was done by the town of Strasburg and um, his understanding is is that the pricing that's being held uh, as the low bid on that project is going to increase at, at some point in the near future by he said I think $30 per meter for the smallest of the water meters so if council is inclined you could act on this amendment tonight there's no requirement for a public hearing or an advertisement but I'd be happy to answer any questions you all might have. I don't see a downside to it. The only, uh, one scenario I was wondering, so if, if the town did do an RFP and wasn't happy with any of them and we had another one that was in our back pocket from Strasburg or wherever, could we defer back to that? Yes. Yes, sir. You can already include that in like the bidding process just as like a default. It's already there. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, essentially. You would think that if that contractor from the earlier procurement was interested, they would submit that, that bid to the town's, uh, in response to the town's solicitation. The other things and not looking at us in the process, right? Yes, so. absolutely. But under that circumstance, if you chose to do so, you could cancel the town's procurement, not award any contract, and then reach out to that uh, below bidder that was awarded a contract by another locality. It's a no-brainer. It's right? a no-brainer, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think we should approve it. I don't see a suggested uh, motion. Does somebody want to make a motion? I just move. I will move that we. So was there a motion in there? No, but just uh, just move that we approve the uh, changes <laughs> recommended by uh, by the town yes, attorney regarding procurement ordinances. Yes, Thank you, sir. Any discussion? Daniel. Yes. Ms. Lillard. Yes. Mr. Tyra. Yes. Mr. Pettit. Yes. Mr. Sanders. Yes. Mr. Webb. Yes. Mr. Vickers. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Jason. That's a good catch. Thank you. All right. Anything from the council? Anybody have anything to bring up? Excited to be reelected. <laughs> <laughs> Still sure? No. Yeah. Sure, sure. Sure as I'm sitting here. <laughs> Glad to have you. Okay. I, I have no announcements, so hearing nothing else. Thank you.